Hey everybody, it's Merrill, and um, we are going to be uh, doing a video today uh, on how to use watercolor pencils. I'll show you my new set that I just invested in. Um, they're from uh, Derwent, and I'm going to be drawing a plum. So this is my new set, watercolor pencils. Um, I'm going to use a lot of the cool colors for this. Um, and I'm also going to finish it off with regular colored pencils, uh, Prismacolor colored pencils. So I got my water here, got my brushes ready, and uh, it's going to be a go. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, how to draw the uh, shape of a plum. And it's pretty simple. Um, it's basically pretty circular. There's an edge on this side that kind of goes in. I'm using a 2H pencil, my new favorite pencil. So easy to erase, um, so able to build up slow tones. And it makes it a little bit like a heart shape. Um, you'll see in a moment the plum is going to be towards the side. So here's like the top of the heart shape. And there I'm finishing my plum. And in here, we are going to leave, there's going to be an indentation. But this is going to be the top of the plum. Right about here. It's going to make a smiley. Now, let's make a leaf. The leaf's going to go off of the shape of the plum. It's the center part of the leaf. And it's going to go just like that. So that's your basic plum shape. And let me just define a little bit more. So there's going to be an indentation in here where the stem is. And also from here, we're going to connect this to this. It's kind of butt shaped. Oops, sorry. Maybe I shouldn't have said that, but I did. Sorry, no sensor button today. So next time that you're eating a plum, um, let's not think of that. Exactly. All right, so that's the basic shape of the plum. Now, let's break these bad boys open. I've used watercolor before, uh, but I have uh, limited experience, with, well, next to no experience, let's be honest here, with the watercolor pencils. All right, so uh, let me take out the purples because obviously we're gonna need the purples. Um, and some blues, but let me just focus on the purples. All right, so we have the colors light violet, um, delft blue. Let me put it in the direction so you guys can see them. Let me zoom in, actually. That would be helpful. Light violet, delft blue. Um, this one is Magenta 22. What a creative name for a color. Um, this one, I was about to say something really silly. I was about to say, this one's called England. Oh, Lord, Merrill, all of these are called England. I'm brilliant sometimes. Blue Violet Lake. Now, what I know about lake colors is they're more transparent. Um, at least that's the case in painting. We will see here. Usually, um... Well, I mean, they could go, uh, in terms of the power of the color, um, they could be, even if they are transparent, they still could be pretty strong. Let me just leave it at that. Red Violet Lake 24. Um, Imperial Purple. Wow. And Dark Violet 25. 
Okay. So those are the ones I'm going to be pretty much using. So first one I am going to take is going to be the light violet 25, or maybe it's 26. E. I'm going to take that, and right in here, oh, these are nice. They come off just like, um, just like the Prismacolors. So I'm going to put this in. I'm not going to make it more than it is. I'm just going to do some um, light hatching right around here. Might pull out a white. But I could save that for the uh, Prismacolors. I'm thinking in terms of layers with this. Not going to accomplish this all in one layer. Going to accomplish this in a few layers. And you know what? Why don't I do this? I don't know uh, too much about this medium. Um, uh, and I don't know how it's going to blend with the uh, color, with the um, the regular pencil. So I'm going to go get my eraser and I'm going to erase before I do that. Here we go. So I'm going to erase. Of course I could still see it, but I don't know how this stuff blends. So um, I don't know if when I put water on it, if it's going to be... Um, you know, what it's going to look like. So I took it out. And I'm going to go extra wide in here. And I'm going to redefine, I'm going to pull out a few more colors, including one called Ultramarine Blue, which I love to use whenever I paint. The edges are going to be a little bit different. Um, I'm going to leave the pencil edges in. to kind of define the shape so I don't have to erase those. I hope that makes sense. That's going to be a very soft edge. So I'm essentially marking in where my highlights are going to be. So I used the um, the light violet 26 and what I did, uh, there's going to be a bend in here uh, and I'm kind of like putting that um, the highlight color in here. Um, I don't know if you've ever picked fruit off of the vine, but um, I know blueberries are, are a very different color. There's like almost like a wax that's on them when you pick them. Um, they're kind of white, as strange as that sounds. And when you rub at it, um, you know, that whiteness comes off. And I'm thinking that, you know, from observing a plum, uh, it is a very similar thing. So that's what I'm putting in right now, and it's going to go along the edge. It's going to be pretty wide. This color is flash pink. Going to see how that goes. This plum is reddish in color, and this leans towards white. In watercolor, you don't really use white. You leave the blank parts uh, white. Um, and there's different things that you could put on the paper. So if you wanted to mark off an area where there's whiteness, um, you could do it. I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm going to instead do it in reverse by putting colored pencil in later. Um, but, you know, you could use uh, this special liquid that, uh, you know, essentially um, allows you to mark off some space. All right, so now I'm taking magenta 22. And I'm hatching in. Really curious what this is going to look like once I add um, the brush and some water. But I'm basically keeping this like dusty. Gets darker back here, so I'm going to use um, imperial purple back around the leaf and right below this there's a dark highlight now all along the bottom and I'm going to go lightly over in here because I'm hoping to blend 
Now the cool thing about this is we're going to do uh, blending with water and paint brushes. I've never tried that before. So I'm really excited to see um, if it screws it up um, or if it really, really helps. So I'm going to go back to the Magenta 22 and I see some higher chroma color. You can tell that this is, um, that what I mean by chroma is the intensity of the color. Look at the difference between the two purples. Intense purple, lower intensity purple. So the magenta, it is um, of a higher tone and of a higher intensity. And I think I'm going to tie in some red because I'm seeing some red. And there's a highlight that happens right in here. So I'm going to mark that out. Not going to put anything in here. And let's take that darker purple right along in here. There's some dark purple. I could already see that this is going to be uh, really cool to use and perhaps a technique. Um, that I could employ uh, in my own work. Some mediums you just take to right away, and I think that is what's happening with this one. I'm really liking this. Um, for those of you who have been following me for a while, or you know, watching my videos, uh, I would use the illustration markers underneath. But this gives me um, this gives me some serious versatility because it gives me the ability to blend more. If you, if you guess wrong with the illustration markers, that's a problem. It's a lot of makeup work. Nobody likes makeup work. I tell my students in school, whenever they have makeup work to do, I'm like, you have to go to cosmetology school. Get it? Makeup work? Oh, that wasn't the greatest joke, I know. Checking to see who's still listening out there. Give me a hard time in the comments section if you heard that one. All right, so putting that in, it's starting to develop. Now, let me find the equivalent of alizarin crimson. Oh, perfect, here we go. We have a color called Crimson Lake 20. That's exactly what I was looking for. And I'm going to go right in with it in here and right along the outside. It's reddish. Plums are beautiful fruits. You almost don't want to bite into them, you know, but they taste good too. All right, now along here, right along the bottom, let me see. No, let me use that highlight color again. Uh, the light violet 26. Okay, is it just me? Look at this. Does it look like light violet 25 or 26? Really can't tell. They gotta do a little bit better with that. Or maybe my vision's getting bad. I don't know. Anywho, back to this. Right along the edge here we're setting up for like a serious highlight right in here. And we want this highlight to like bounce like crazy. But I'm going to use that as a blending color up in here. You're going to make me lose my mind up in here, up in here. See, if you keep watching, you get to hear me sing. Hit that like button. Come on now. All right, so this actually, even though we're supposed to blend it with water, this actually blends pretty well. I'm liking this. Okay, so we're getting some interesting diversification of tones over in here. And let me see. Interesting, they did not give me a black. Um, darkest that I have is the Delft Blue. Now, if I remember correctly, this one goes towards green, so I want to use it very sparingly. 
I'm going to put it in the cooler parts. Let's see if there's a color ultramarine blue or king blue. We've got cobalt, spectrum. Here we go. That's what I'm talking about. Ultramarine blue. Okay. Yeah, so this is a color that if you're a painter, um, it is crucial. At one point in art history, it was more valuable uh, than gold. So, you know, people would bring in gold and along the trade routes. Um, this color, uh, ultramarine blue means from beyond the sea. And they would have to go to a, they meaning, um, you know, people who traded with it, would have to go to um, a deposit in Afghanistan in order to get it. And it was the only known place, um, you know, during the Renaissance uh, to get it. And it was like very remote. And that's why you always see the Virgin Mary uh, dressed in blue in religious paintings. People are like, uh, yeah, blue is the color of holiness. Well, that's because of that rock deposit. Art history is an interesting thing. Anywho, let me get back to my teaching. So I'm going to use that. Tie that in here. And let me get back to that crimson lake. I'm in like art joy mode right now. I'm like, oh, I don't know what to even reach for having fun with these new mediums. All right, so that is going to get a little bit of red over here. And we need some more. And let me go to my highlight color, the light violet. I'm going to put that in right in here. Carve out a highlight in there and a bigger one right about here. Zoom in a little bit. This is a tricky part over here. It's lower in chroma. So I'm going to use that red. Now right now it's a line. We want that to be a little bit better. Let me grab that ultramarine. And it's going to get bluish as it turns in here. Did you know plums were so detailed? I didn't. And let me also keep that shape. Remember, this is, um, like I said before, this is the butt right here. And we want to keep that intact, even though we're adding tones. Redefine the edge right there. A little bit of blue to neutralize the red. And now let me go over it again with the light violet. So this is complex, layered, and detailed in here. This is very much like working with regular colored pencils, as strange as that may sound.
but the good thing is I can add a layer of water over it to blend it. I'm really curious now. And I do have a white. I just found it. And now it's going to be very helpful. That was the one thing that was throwing me off. This edge here is crucial. Got to make it believable, otherwise it flattens out, and it's flattening out now. I know I have another layer that I could put on with the colored pencils, but I'm hoping not to go that route. I mean, I am, but um, I want to get as much done. I want to be as efficient as possible with this. Efficient is a word a lot of artists don't like, but let's face it, in this world you have to be efficient with things. So I'm trying to do just that. All right, this is the high chroma area. I'm going to take a brown to just go around the edges in here. I'm going to leave it in highlight. And a green in here. Some details of the uh, veins of the leaf might be helpful. So I'll put that in. And I think I'm going to make this side of the leaf darker. And I'm going to keep the actual veins in highlight. And there's going to be a fold, and this is going to be dark. All right, starting to look plum-like. Now, problem is I haven't added any water yet. If anybody has used these before and you got tips for me, oh, I listen. That's the cool thing about me. I'm not a know-it-all. I listen, and I've learned a lot over the years because of that. It's all about being humble, I think at least. These are cool pencils. Um, they're not a product placement, I just bought them. It's um, Derwent watercolor pencils. All right, so down in here, there's an edge, and there's some color, and that'll give it a little more depth. So I'm liking this, but it's flattening out a bit. And over in here, on the other side of the leaf, there's some really strong shadow. All right, ultramarine going to go in create some edges okay so I am going to show you some of the brushes that I'm going to use for this and the thing that I'm going to stress is with this medium you want to use something that is soft tipped um, if you compare uh, brushes for um, oil painting uh, versus brushes for watercolor painting the watercolor brushes are very soft. You don't want to really make scratches to the surface of the paper that you're using. So I'm going to try that this time, but I also have a few of my um, regular brushes because my area of expertise, um, you know, the thing that I truly was a student of is oil painting. And, you know, when I teach, I want to teach from my lens, um, you know, through my own life experiences. And I'm always honest when I don't know something and I'm trying to experiment with something. 
like this today. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so I'm going to use this um, in combination with the watercolor brushes. Here we go. I am nervous. I don't know why. If I mess up, I just do it again. That's it. Um. All right. So let's see. I guess instinct tells me get the darker areas done first. Let me go right in with this medium brush. I'm going to put a little bit of water on first. Let's see what happens. Wow, it just turned to paint. That is cool. Look at that. I don't know if you could see that. Wow, how cool is that? That just turned to paint. Oh, I'm loving this. Let's add a little bit more water. I'm liking that purple in there. Let's actually think about this, like moving around that color. And keeping that edge. Oh, this is really cool. See, so I just added some water, and there we go, there we have it. All right, so in this area here, let me clean my brush. Um, yeah, whenever I change areas, I'm going to uh, clean my brush. So got it here, dip it in the water. And now let's go over in here. We want this to turn up a reddish color. And we got that. I could go over this with my um, regular colored pencils. I'm going to spread this a little bit in here, even though that's a little too dark. So I don't have too much water on the brush right now. I'm finding a happy medium. Oh, I'm going to use this. This is awesome. Dipping again, using the same brush. Let's get this dark part done first. Alright, put that in. Now this part I'm a little worried about. Let's see how it goes. Perfect! Yeah, it is, uh, you see how it's like a muddy white? That's what I wanted. Yeah, so that white did wind up blending. That's awesome. And since it's on my brush, I'm going to use it down here. All right, let's try something. So I want to extend that. I'm going to take my white. And I am going to take that really bright purplish color, if I find it. Where is it? Here we go. And I'm going to draw it down here. So that's with the um, violet light color. I'm going to clean my brush again. I'm going to go right in. And pull that right into here. Being very cognizant of the edges. Maybe I'm being cautious, but I'm not using too much water right now. If you want a more stylized effect, um, yeah, maybe you'd want to go for more water. But for this one, I just want a plum looking plum, if that makes sense. No impressionism, we want plum 
ism. There I was a little bit bolder, added more water. All right, back here it should be dark. And now in here, I'm gonna clean the brush, dry it a bit. And I'm gonna see if I could blend this. I'm liking that blue that came out there. That'll go really nicely. And I'm going to take the white. And right in this highlight area, I'm going to press really hard. It shouldn't be this light, but it should be pretty light. Same thing over in here. So I'm going to scribble it in. Now I'm going to take the brush and I'm going to dab, dab, and same thing over here. Let me refigure this. Okay, so welcome back. Uh, I am uh, now ready to uh, use the regular colored pencils. I let it dry for uh, a while, uh, perhaps about an hour and a half, and uh, now we're going to see what happens with the regular colored pencils. I'm kind of excited to try. Um, the colors I am going to feature, this is, I hope I can see this, uh, Violet de Parme, which is a light um, or medium purple. Um, this is lilac. Uh, these are all Prismacolor colors. Violet. Got violet blue. Crimson red. Same palette I'm following uh, as the other, uh, you know, with the other pencils. Um, got black. Um, I think this is... I have no idea. My eyes are not that good. But it's a uh, it's a purple. <laughs> Sorry. And I'm also going to use a whole bunch of grays. So we got gray here. Oh, this one is um, the ultramarine blue. Um, got some white, some more grays. That's going to be my basic palette for this. Okay. So what I am going to do is I am going to take a few seconds to just give it a good look. And I'm not liking how this dried. kind of want to do something about that. It's not very shaded. Uh, it's not very, um, you know, it's almost like a, uh, a wart that's on the skin of the plum. And uh, we kind of want to make this look good. So I'm not happy how that came out. But, um, you know, for the most part, I like the way that this is headed. So, took an inventory right there. Um, I think one of the most important parts is this highlight right over here. So I'm gonna go right in with the white. Let me just jump right in. And if you could see, I'm able to push this highlight out. It was too much of a line. But now with the white, I can push this highlight out. And diversify it a little bit. And I'm going to look at the edges now. I'm going to start to pull them. Yeah, over in here, this is going to be 
later. Whenever you see my step-by-step -step videos, I always tell you guys, we work from shapes to edges. And we continue to do that with this. So this could actually stand to be a little bit more purple. I'm going to take my light purple and I'm going to go right in. And that did a nice job of covering it up. Now I'm in my comfort zone. I've used colored pencils for a long time um, and I really you know, know quite a bit about them. Uh, more than, you know, more than, um, whatchamacallit, uh, the, uh, the watercolor pencils. I'm going to go in with the darker purple here, kind of cover that over. I want it to be a hint of a highlight, but not exactly a highlight. Now, a really important color that I actually didn't say uh, was is Tuscan Red. Um, I know a lot about this color. I use it a lot. It's a deep red that you could use to add shadows. So I'm going to try to make this a little bit redder. I'm going to do some hatching right on top in here and really build this shadow. Yeah, see that? See how that's happening? Building the shadow. I'm going to take this Tuscan Red and I'm going to go all the way up here. I am a mixed media artist. I want to, I want to recruit you to, to be the same. Um, don't just say you're a painter. Don't just say you're a color pencil artist. No, all of the different materials have different uses. I just further expanded my repertoire, and there's nothing wrong with doing that. At the beginning of this, I never used those watercolor colored pencils. Now I love them. going to take the red. This is the crimson red. I'm going to press a little bit harder. Really give it that glow. See that? See how that's popping? Going to take the red, same thing. And I really like this because it adds, um, it gives us the ability to work in layers, and you can see all of these layers. And that is what creates depth. Now I'm taking that violet plum purple and going to town with it. Going to thin this out a little bit. The beauty of colored pencils is their accuracy. They are so accurate. Let's go in here. Let's build this up. See? There we go. Depth, deep color. More of the red it could use over here. Yeah, it's a beautiful color. It's a combination of violet and Tuscan red. And now you see this is really starting to pop. Okay, now, ultramarine blue. We're going to use a tinted form of that. It is called King's Blue Lake. And I'm going to go and cross over in here. See that blue coming out there? 
makes the edge more interesting. When you look at it from a distance, the eye will just blend it. So, you know, you won't see the subtleties, but now that I'm doing it, I'm going to describe that to you. All right, so this edge, we're going to go on with the blue also. It's a great highlight color because it's the color of the sky. You don't have to use white for highlights. You could use other colors for that too. Yeah, look at that edge now. Now I want to bring out this highlight a little bit. So let me go pure white in here. So strong highlight there. Strong highlight in here. Let's darken this a little bit. And there we go. Over in here, this is going to be a lighter edge. So I'm going in with that blue. There we go. You see how that softened the edge in here? It's really important. Some edges are soft, some are hard. Make sure that you get your edges right. Make sure that you observe. Now let's see, is there anywhere we can sharpen the edge? Yeah. So I'm actually going to go in and I'm going to use black right up here. I want a line of contrast only here. Hard edge up there, soft edge around it. Not an outline. We do not want an outline. I'm going to go even a little bit darker. I'm going to take that black. I'm pressing really light because I don't want to ruin this. I'm really happy with how this is going. And there we go. That pushed it back even a little bit further. Going to go up the plum. We're trying to round it. All this is, this is colored pencils and um, watercolor pencils. Two different types of colored pencil. That's it. Now right in here, I'm going to define this. Create a strong edge right there. Might even hint at some edges to the leaf. going to take a chance. Having fun here. This is kind of an orangey red and this is such, it's filled with cool colors. It's filled with um, colors that lean towards blue. But what we can do is we can create highlights. If you really want to overdo it, we could create highlights. And what happens is the eye blends them together. See? Let's do a highlight here. And then let's take more of this blue and I'm going to hatch right into here. There we go. Maybe make it a little bit more purple. There we go, that turns it. Now, take a look at this object. This is broken, of course, um, but this is a wax stick. That's all it is. It's um, Prismacolor Art Sticks. Uh, colorless blender if you're looking for the exact name for it. It is a magical tool. Now take a look over in here. If 
you notice you kind of have these edges. Let me point with the pencil so that the shadow doesn't get in the way. You have these edges that are kind of like, eh, so-so. What this will do is soften those edges. It is a great tool for softening. So let me take it. Let me go right in and watch. Melts it like butter. Look at that. Like butter. And you could add that, take a little bit away. Oops. Yeah, I just broke my pencil. There we go. We are almost finished. I'm very happy with this. Oh, the leaf. See, I ignore the parts that are so-so. Um, let me... <laughs> let me go look for some colored pencils. That's what I'll do. Now, I have one right here. And I'm going to put this in. Which darkens it. I want the edges of the leaves to be um, a little bit lighter. Nuts about edges. Create a highlight in here. Little vein in here. Go back over here, lighten this, and put some hints of color in here. And flatten it out. I'm going to take a black and again put hints of the vein structure. Okay, so the only spot where it's outlined is right up here. Everything else is kind of a soft, very soft outline. Um, and we're almost done. Just finishing touches. Like the highlight in here. Let me extend it a little bit, mix it in with the purple. Let me lighten this. And lighten this. And we're done. So I tell you what, if you learned something from this, please hit that thumbs up button. Uh, I would appreciate it if you're not subscribed already, if you could. Um, love making these videos for you. So if you have a request, you know, put it in the comments. Um, especially on new videos, I always try to write back to um, each person uh, that, uh, that sends me a comment. So, you know, write those comments. And uh, yeah, once again, thank you so much for watching. Uh, let me know if you learned something. I'm always happy to hear that uh, if you do. Okay. Thank you.